Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it and give this video a like. Podcast below in the description. Check it out right now. Merton Hanks, former Niner safety. On. So how about this, John? Um, this from Aaron Wilson of the Houston Chronicle, writing about Deshaun Watson. He says multiple team. Uh, he, he cites unnamed sources. I'm reading to you from the. Uh, this is actually the PF uh, Pro Football Talk summary. I'm aggregating the aggregator. Uh, Wilson cites unnamed sources to support the claim that multiple teams remain interested in Deshaun Watson. The Eagles, the Panthers, the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Broncos. What do you? I uh, I know what my immediate reaction is to that, but what do you make of that? Uh, I think everyone is constantly monitoring just the nature of a player of this magnitude who's on the quote unquote trade block or wants a trade. Yeah. You would monitor that no matter what, right? I mean, it's just you're it'd be gross negligence as a general manager if you're not. I I had a buddy in the league that had a player on his team released. Uh, a couple days ago, and he said the GM had called uh, of another team had called him within an hour to just ask some questions about the guy, just basic questions. He was like, "Where? Uh, we, what, what, why didn't you call when I wanted to trade him?" <laughs> so it's just, it, and th this was a scout on another staff, just guys doing research, and that's just the way it works. It's easier with situations like, "Well, why'd you guys cut him?" Or even if it was money related, "What's the guy like? You like him? You see him every day in the building?" This situation is a little out of everyone's control. I got off the golf course uh, on Friday and had got a text that, God, the number is up to 10. That this That's the latest that I've seen on 10 women at the time as Friday afternoon had, you know, raised allegations, le levied civil suits. I don't even know the right terminology for this. But it, it's gotten to the point where I'm – I've come to the conclusion where you were on this early that you just could not under any circumstances trade for him with this amount of just stuff hanging out there, even though it's not substantiated. No, there's no guilty. You know, you're innocent in, in America. You're innocent until proven guilty, except in 2021. You're not really the way social media works. But this but is not the, even about that. No, I, I know. But in the. This is these are serious allegations. Right? I'm and just we've saying, seen this. even if social, even if Twitter didn't exist, you couldn't trade for him right now. Uh, I, I would say in the I, when we were kids, I I, don't, I think you probably could have. If there was an equivalent of this quarterback, I, I think a lot has changed. Like I would say, in the last ten years in the league, it's dramatically changed. I mean, guy, th there was a video of a dude fucking knocking her out, and Roger Goodell. We, we had basically evidence that he saw it, and he suspended the guy two games. Yeah, but I'm not saying right? if this was thirty years ago or twenty years ago when these allegations might be taken less w would not be taken with the appropriate uh, uh, approach, or where the league would be less likely to get involved. I'm just saying, in this circumstance, you can't. There's just too much unknown. And it's and it's like the the degree to how bad it potentially would be is so bad it, that the risk would just be too large if you're one of these teams. So, yeah, the Niners, the Panthers, the Dolphins, the Jets, the Broncos and the Eagles are interested. We're all interested. They're interested in a way that, you know, the Rams are not interested. Sure, because the Rams aren't going to trade for Deshaun Watson. But there's a difference. I read that. My reaction is there's a difference between interested and willing to acquire him right now yeah i'd argue that that those teams interest the ones that like on pro football talk listed or i guess that that aaron listed i'm just reading give aaron florio I'm, ag I'm aggregating aggregators <laughs> is that those teams were interested before any report came out those interest those teams have been interested from the jump as they should be this now just complicates situation and i saw a quote from rusty harden that they just ask for everyone's patience. Again, my patience, your patience are relevant. He's been, I think he's kind of talking to the teams, right? He's talking to decision makers. He's kind of talking to the league uh, indirectly. And, and I think know, he's probably I, just talking to back to your original point, just to the court of public opinion, right? Yeah. That, uh, you know, maybe we find out more this week. That's kind of what he insinuated, but Deshaun Watson has a problem on his hands. There's just no way around it. Uh, even if, you know, I think we're all hoping that he's just an innocent He's innocent because if, if he's not, this would be one of the crazier stories ever, right? Because I, I was just texting around with people like his character guy in the league is, is pristine. You know, like we make fun of Russell sometimes like Russell's a high character guy, but we're like, God, this guy's a fucking people don't like him. And he's weird. Deshaun Watson's character reads like Brady. Like he's a great player. People in the building fucking swear by him. 
good players, bad players, coach. Like people just love this guy. Yeah. And it, it would be a, it would be have ripple effects in the league if there's validity behind this stuff. And if there's not, I think it will have ripple effects as well. And that's where I think everyone, you know, the first couple, it's it, to me, it's, it's, it's all right to even say like this whole thing just is weird, right? He asked for a trade. Easterby is getting drugged through the mud. Unlike any non, you know, normal GM name we've ever seen. Then this happens. Then it keeps snowballing. I, I think it's fair that just that I would imagine the average person just on a text chain would be like, God, this whole thing's weird. Right. But until it gets solved, I go back to what you said and you're, you've been saying from the jump is like, these teams are not going to be able to pull the trigger until there is at least much, much more clarity. Something happens. I, I saw someone on social media today, a, a masseuse came out that she had dealt with Deshaun, never had an issue. Uh, just like a, clearly he was, uh, what, what would be the right word? Attempting to hire masseuses through Instagram. I think he's even admitted that because of Corona oh, over the Corona times. So he was messaging people through Instagram to get mas- massages. And listen, massages are a normal part for like I think <laughs> casual guy says massages. We think about it differently. Uh, athletes, you know, hell, golfers now take. I was listening to this George Brett interview. Gary Woodland pays two thousand dollars a tournament for a masseuse just to stretch them. Like these guys, and and you know what? I was talking to someone yesterday. I, I do think stretching and the pliability thing is, you know, it's going to get proven out, you know, for certain positions and certain people and just certain people in different sports, like for alignment, strength and stuff will always matter. But I, I do think it's going to be more and more prevalent. Yeah. Right. I, I would have said when we were kids in the 90s, you would have said masseuses, people would have laughed like, oh, that guy's soft. Right. It's it's a major part of sports culture now. Stretching masseuses, sure. however you want to quant. Uh, quantify it right yep, yep and because you've got older players too trying to play beyond their physical peaks right you're doing all this stuff right it was i think Igadala. remember Igadala, who physically is just looks the same as he always has from a stature standpoint um athletically you know the, there are certain things that you can't prevent but just he would always talk about at the time not a lot of people brady did talk about sleep the way andre Igadala did so anyway i'm getting off track here but um yeah, I mean, the question for Deshaun, it, the, the the first, second, third, fifth, and 50th question for Deshaun is, you know, dealing with this situation first. Beyond that, from as it relates to Aaron Wilson's report, the Eagles, the, the Niners, right, those teams, like they, I think at this point, if, we, if we're talking about how, this, how they view this situation, which is the point of this conversation, they have to, I think, whatever your percentage pie chart would be, we'll just use the Niners for an example. And like, you know, 30% is we want to get Deshaun, and 30% is we want Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, we'd be okay with Jimmy and 15% is Sam Darnold. And the rest is like broken up among the quarterbacks in this draft that, you know, could we, okay, it's not Lawrence, but could we get up to three, right? Like if that's your pie chart, it's just your kind of quarterback energy. I do think, the Deshaun portion of that pie chart has to minimize. You just have you just can't be putting as much. You kind of low thirty percent to me. The Niners. Well, would be whatever like, the percent. Yeah, make it eighty yeah, percent. Like eighty. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, make it eighty. <laughs> but it's got to be less. Jimmy was a little higher. Yeah, no, I hear you. So okay, yeah, it'd be if it was hell, John. It might have been ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. I would it say was, all. Though, I would say all just, the teams on this list should be all over Deshaun. So Watson yeah, they're still we, interested, but they I think have to be actively more engaged in the other stuff. That was also on that pie chart, given the circumstances. I, I, I'm going to say this, and I, I understand the lawyers won't say this or won't let him say this, and I, we'll find out more this week. But th- there Maybe. is a there is a uh, ticking clock on this situation for some of these teams, right? Because the 49ers, for example, I think, I think the, the Panthers, for the example, Panthers, 100. percent th- I mean, if they have a Trey Lance, a Jimmy, you know, a, a, Ju- a Justin Fields on their roster, come you know, April 28th or 29th by the end of that night, whenever that Thursday is, even if it, a couple weeks later, all this stuff goes away and Deshaun's clear, like it's over for those teams and this guy, like it's, this is not the NBA. You don't just trade Andrew Wiggins for Kevin Love. Like that guy is on the team. What if you had a rookie minicap and you're like, Oh, it's just, you got no chance. Like once you draft the guy and trade your first round pick to get, it just be over, especially for the Niners having to move up. Like there is just no pivoting. At least, you know. What if the Texans loved Justin Fields and you had him? 
and you like yeah, John Moore. You're just not going to do it. Like, I just don't. It never happens, ever. Now, I know, but, don't never, get but if I'm playing devil, devil's advocate, it never happens well, that a team drafts well, Josh you, Rosen could, and then drafts Kyler. Well, because I guarantee, I, I pay him, uh, you know, whatever. the If I draft the guy third overall, I pay him a ton of money. I don't have any picks to trade him then, right? I've already used my picks. What do I have well, to do? Well, you're using him? the player, yeah. You'd have to use that player and future picks. Yeah, just I, I don't see it. If well, the I don't, 49ers need, I don't see it either. Fields, my point is, I don't it's see over it either. John Watson. Yeah, yeah, I don't see it either. But I, you know, I there is a world where the where the Texans would like the guy you got, and would want to trade him, and you would still like him more than the guy you got. Because we, you and I, believe this. If they waited past the draft anyway, they're taking less value than they could otherwise get. Yeah, I don't think you never see rookie. I guess I mean we saw Lynn Bowden, but you don't see rookies. <laughs> Because of the salary cap, like the hit on the salary cap at thir- the third overall pick, I'd have to ask around, but it would complicate things. Yeah, but the good news would be that Deshaun he's wouldn't only cost be making 10 that much year, this yeah. year. And again, the cap's going to be $950 billion next year. So, yeah. or something along those lines. But no, no, be, I'm not it, suggesting it would, would be an unheard of. It would be an unheard of transaction to trade uh, a guy totally. in but, August. But again, I, like the Rosen Kyler thing was unheard of. Did get a year? Did get a year. Yeah, not the same. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, but that's where if I'm Deshaun, like he's no dummy. Like he, if again he's innocent, if he's innocent, that date is weighing on me. Like I, I'm telling my lawyer, I, I'm like, fuck, I, I'll speak because I'm bi- I'm a big believer in that. I'm innocent. And I'm speaking. I know, but I, I said it. this last time. Everyone's a big believer in it until their agents. I, I mean, their lawyers. Obviously some, some, people, telling people some people. Some people do it though. Sometimes, like uh, just come out and talk. Yeah. And. If you really want this to happen, because that that date to me is weighing on their situation, but they know it, right? Because because he's been but, he's been adamant about one thing, right? I want to play for the Niners or the Broncos, which is kind of weird. That's it. He has not said those other teams, and he has a no trade clause. But here's the thing: if the lawyer it's says why, it's why sometimes people DM me like, why wouldn't Seattle? Because on, on paper we would like what, if just trade Russell Wilson for Deshaun Watson. I said. Do you understand that Russell Wilson over his dead body would would agree to a trade to the Houston Texans? <laughs> like that that's never happening. Yeah. This is not like that those days are over just with these no trade clause. My my final point on this though is Rusty Harden could say, "Okay, yeah, you saying something might be good for your football career, but it's not good for your for the the thing that I'm trying to accomplish for your life. And you got to we got to handle this first, and then you can worry about whether or not the offense fits you if, you know, whatever. If that situation then if you're lucky enough to then be in that situation. I am uh, fascinated to see what they're going to do this week. Yeah. Well, the lawyer, and again, when we talk about this, we understand that we're not, ex- you know, I didn't stay at a holiday in last night, and I don't. States, I don't yeah, just, states, yes. just a couple states. But apparently, one thing Florio wrote on Sunday was 12 lawsuits currently, and the, the lawyer um, is going to, Tony Busby, on Monday will spark an effort to launch a criminal prosecution. Again, I, I'm just reading you this stuff. Our team will be submitting affidavits and evidence from several women. Um, so perhaps something they're going to do something Monday. But someone else can explain. I'll, I'll try not to explain. Because there, Well, there, there hasn't been criminal charges yet. If that happens, I would say if that goes down and criminal charges are brought upon, his, his trade would basically go to zero chance, zero percent. Uh, request a grand jury, apparently. That's what he's going to start the process of Monday. Yeah. No, if I, if I, what, the moment criminal stuff and like any affidavits and these lead to criminal charges, to me, then his trade possibility are immediately zero percent. 